Hey everyone, this is Josh with another digital security tutorial available at chaintuts.com. And today we're talking about the very important topic of two-factor authentication, commonly referred to as 2FA. This is an important part of staying safe online, just like your password hygiene. So we're going to talk about what two-factor authentication is, different types of two-factor authentication, and why you want to use two-factor authentication to help secure your digital life. So let's start off with talking about what 2FA is. There's an authentication workflow that happens anytime you log into a website that you're interested in using. So if you're in the digital asset space, for example, and you want to log into your Coinbase account, or if you want to log into your Gmail or your social media or anything else. Normally, you just present a password. A password is considered something that you know. So the idea is for you to prove that you're the rightful owner of an online account, you present a password, which is something that only you should know about. Now, the problem with this in practice is passwords do get leaked and passwords do get cracked. So if there's a data breach and your password isn't very secure or high entropy, uh, attackers can crack that password and then use it to log into your accounts pretending to be you. Because all they would need is the username and the password, which they now have. So the idea emerged of adding a second factor, which is something that you have to the authentication workflow. So when you go to log into Coinbase with 2FA enabled, you need your password and you also need some kind of secret token. If an attacker compromises just the password, they still can't get into your account because they don't have that 2FA token. So let's talk a little bit about uh, what types of 2FA are out there. And we're gonna talk about these ranked from the most secure to the least secure. The first and I would say best type of two-factor authentication is hardware-based 2FA. So this is something like a YubiKey USB dongle or even a smart card, which you might be familiar with uh, in the business world. What these devices do is they store a private key uh, that cannot be read off of the device. So the way the devices are built, even if you have it, you can't read the secret itself off of there. And you have a public key that's generated from the private key, which you register with the services you want to use. So for example, if I want to use my YubiKey with Coinbase, I would go into my security settings and register that specific key, which registers a public key with Coinbase. When I go to log in after I present my password, I tap the device uh, and that does a challenge response mechanism. So Coinbase will ask the device to essentially sign a message and uh, prove that that key is the uh, rightful holder of the private key to that public key. Now, if you're not so interested in the technical details, that's fine. But the important thing to know is this device uh, is built in such a way that uh, you, know, you would have to steal the physical device from somebody to be able to use their two-factor authentication. There's no type of malware or anything that can try to read the secret tokens off of the device. And for that reason, they're generally very secure. Uh, as well, they're actually a little bit easier to use than the next type of 2FA we're gonna talk about, which is the Auth app, because you don't have to bother typing in six digit codes or anything like that, or opening up another app on your phone. All you need to do is have the device plugged in and you know tap on the device is usually part of the workflow. Now, Auth app 2FA is also generally pretty secure. This is uh, the type that you commonly see with Microsoft Authenticator, Google Authenticator, LastPass, Duo. There's many different companies that make uh, Authenticator apps that use roughly the same protocol. So what you do there is when you want to set up 2FA for your account, you usually scan a QR code with your Auth app or maybe manually input a secret. Your phone then, or whatever device you have the uh, Auth app on, will store those secrets and generate usually six digit codes. So when you go to log into coinbase.com, you'll first present your password, and then you'll type in a six digit code. 
and those codes usually rotate every 30 seconds. So even if an attacker somehow manages to fish a uh, you know, login credential from you with a fake website, that code is gonna be no good after less than a minute. This is generally still very secure uh, because you're storing a secret and you're not sending any codes or private information over an insecure medium like SMS or email. They're theoretically less secure than something like a security token because there could be a software uh, vulnerability in the auth app itself that could leak those secrets. So you know maybe the uh, authors of the auth app didn't do the best job with the secret storage and you get some malware on your computer or your phone that looks for that information. But generally speaking, these are also a secure way to do 2FA. Now, the insecure way of doing 2FA, which unfortunately is still fairly common, especially with legacy systems like banks, is something like SMS or email two-factor authentication. This is where when you log in and you present your password, the website will then email you one of these four, six, or eight digit codes, uh, or send one through a text message to your phone, and you have to type in that code. The reason this is so insecure is SMS and email are insecure mediums of communication that are fairly easy to break. So a very common one that we see in the cryptocurrency or digital asset space is the SIM swap attack where if a uh, attacker knows my phone number, they will call up AT&T pretending to be me and try to trick them into transferring the phone number to their device. If they can do that, they don't even need to know my password because they can initiate a password reset and use the uh, SMS-based 2FA as a proof of identity. So there's a lot of problems with using SMS and email 2FA and you really don't want to use it for anything important. You know, there's kind of this question of is crappy two-factor auth better than no two-factor auth? A lot of us in the digital asset space would say for really important things like exchanges in your email, you're better off just to have a really good password than even to use this. Because again, an attacker may not have to compromise your password if they can compromise your uh, phone number, for example, and initiate a password reset. This has happened time and time again, especially to high profile individuals in the space. And people have lost lots of money this way. So you want to use good two-factor authentication. YubiKeys are about $90 for a two-pack of them. I don't have any affiliation with them. I just happen to like their product and use it. And of course, the free way to go is to use auth, auth app 2FA. Most modern websites support either hardware or auth app 2FA. And if you're dealing with a website that doesn't, you kind of want to be careful. Uh, it's you know something that has become an industry standard practice for a reason. If you haven't already, in addition to this video, watch my password security tutorial. The best way to protect yourself online is to generate strong and unique passwords that you store in a password manager, don't reuse passwords, and set up strong two-factor authentication. It's unlikely that most attackers are going to target you individually, uh, unless they have a good reason to, and for the most part they go for the low-hanging fruit. So if you're somebody that has a strong password with lots of randomness or entropy in it, you have strong 2FA set up, they're going to go for other people's Gmail accounts with crappy reused passwords and no 2FA. These are important ways to protect yourself and save yourself headache from having to get a new email account, lose your digital assets, or something even worse. Have some compromise of your personal data. So two-factor authentication is a great way to protect yourself. I hope you found this video interesting and informative, and thanks as always for learning something new with me today.